Okay, so I'm going to get into the film study in a second, because he's JC Horn, he's a very interesting player. I do got to be honest up front, though, I don't love this pick. I just don't. Uh, you know, I've talked about before, I, I think that they should have gone quarterback here, just because I, I don't know how much faith I have in Sam Darnold when he got outplayed by Joe Flacco last year. That's just my opinion. Uh, but people disagree, and that's fine. But again, uh, a corner like J.C. Horn, who I'm, I'm I'm higher on than some people and lower on than others. I don't think he's the number one corner in this draft class or even the number two corner in this draft class. I do think there's talent there. You know, I, he's not the most explosive. His 40 time wasn't, I think that's, that's a, you know, that's a pro day 40 time. It's not quite as good. I do believe in that. But at the same time, there is a lot to like there. And I think in the right system, it could absolutely work out. It's just not the pick I would have made. I, I just think that there's uh, too many issues there. And, and again, I would have rather them gone like offensive line here or something, which is what I think would have made more sense. Uh, but, you know, let's get into the film study and we'll talk more about sort of the pros and the cons of him. Because I, I don't think he's like a bust and I don't think he's an awful player. I do have a first round grade on him. It's just a lot later in the first round. So yeah, uh, let's just get into it. So let's start things off with this play. So JC Horn's biggest critics are largely talking about a play that's like this, not this play in particular, but just this type of play where it's a uh, cover one play and there's a receiver running a go route on the sideline. JC Horn is covering him. And this is a big deal when it comes to what translates to the NFL. The reality is it doesn't matter how good your footwork is. It doesn't matter how good your hands are. If someone, once they get past the line, is just faster than you, they'll run by you and there's not much you can do about it. So Speed is a real thing, and I don't think his speed is bad. Like, he is somewhat explosive. It's not the best thing in the world. He ran a sub 4 4 40 at the uh, pro day, which means he probably runs a sub 4 5 40, which to me is fast enough. But anyways, watch how on this play. So again, it's a clean release. He's not creating any contact. It's it's pretty obvious what the receiver is doing. And so the question on this play is just going to be, how well does Horn keep up with this wide receiver? And it's the throw is only going to be another like seven yards further down the field because it's already happened a little bit. But to me, that's that's enough. Like if you're a fast receiver, that can be enough to get by someone. But as you see, there's really no separation and this ball falls incomplete. So uh, you know, I mean, maybe if that's a perfect throw and perfect catch, then I would say, yeah, okay, that that's going to be a catch there. I mean, if it's a perfect throw and a great catch is what I mean, or even just like a very good catch. But at the same time, that's fine. Like, I, I don't have an issue with that. There is some questions about will his explosiveness work against some of the fast corners in the NFL when quarterbacks have more time to throw and can throw it further down the field and can throw it more accurately. I think those questions are fair. That's a fair concern. But I really would say that's my only concern about J.C. Horn. I think pretty much everything else he does, he does fantastically well. So I'm not really going to freak out too much over that. Actually, I would say this one, we'll do one more negative, and then we'll get into the positives. Trust me, there are positives. There's a lot I like about J.C. Horn. There are some things that are concerning, though. And we can't lie to ourselves and just talk ourselves into a prospect just because, you know, everyone thinks that they're great. You have to watch the tape yourself and say, eh, I'm not so sure. At least that's what I think. Uh, you got to look at the positives and the negatives and figure out how to, you know, what you value more. So anyways, you see the route, one-on-one -on -one matchup, blah, blah, blah. That's not important. See what happens. So right when this play starts, I mean, you notice that the receiver has one right here. And in the NFL, when you get to this point, the only way to come back is with speed. You're not coming back in any other way. And that's kind of why I harp on speed so much when it comes to corners. And again, he's not slow. He's fine. He's uh, he's fast enough to be an NFL corner. He absolutely is. Uh, don't get too blown away by his pro day 40, though. That's all I have to say. But Horn has a different thing that he tries to do. He has a different way that he tries to see if he can come back, but this just isn't going to fly in the NFL. Watch what he does. He's going to create this contact, which eventually causes that Clemson player to fall down, and that's an easy flag and uh, just, um, it, it's, you can't be doing that, J.C. Horn. In the NFL, when guys, guys know how to go down easy, so to speak. Uh, you try to do that to some uh, wide receiver in the NFL that's been in the league for a while. He's going to know exactly how to draw that penalty. And honestly, the refs in the NFL are better, so they spot that stuff more than they do in college. Also, I'm pretty sure Roger Goodell loves it when there's pass interference penalties. He wants more offense. He wants more scoring, so he's going to be very happy about it. And pass interference penalties are more uh, damaging in the NFL because in college, they're just a 15-yard penalty. In the NFL, they can be a 70-yard penalty. It can, there's no limits, so it's a spot foul. So that's concerning. 
So he needs to cut that out, basically is my whole point, which he can do, but it might result in him getting burned a couple times, which is a bit of a concern. Okay, now time for this play. Enough negatives. I'm sorry for doing too much negatives at the beginning. I usually like to sprinkle those on at the end, not the beginning, uh, because there is stuff I like about Horn. Like, I, I have a first-round grade on him. I'm lower on him than uh, a lot of people are, but I'm also higher on him than some people are. You know, he's a very controversial player in this draft. But on this play, it's a cover one blitz. You see the route on the screen. And what can be tough about these types of routes is, you know, you kind of have to stop at an instant. But watch how right when this play starts. So you see he's running over the middle. At this point, one thing that he does, I think, well at this point is the way he's creating contact, not in a way to slow down that receiver. But basically at this point, if you're a receiver, you can't cut, you know, to your right because then you're just going to run into horn so you kind of it's just it makes things a little bit easier for horn as he can kind of just sort of allow himself now to know where the receiver is going to go not exactly because it could be a route further down the field he could be stopping like he actually is so there's several things that could happen but it's a good job of horn i think of you know creating the contact without moving the receiver in any way that's going to draw a penalty and then watch how he is able to just stop at an instant. His footwork is really good. So that stuff right there, beautiful. Uh, fantastically done. I'm a big fan. I think that that's uh, really well done. And I do feel like if he's not getting beat with speed, he's probably just not getting beat. So that's a, a huge luxury. And again, with sort of not having a combine, the 40-yard dash, it's such a... That to me, that's such a great tool in evaluating a quarterback, a corner that we just don't have this year, and that's going to be kind of an issue, but maybe not. And one more thing I have to talk about is on this play, he's in a cover three zone, and that is the ideal situation to use Horn. I think that you put him in zone coverage as much as possible, and he can be a great zone corner. So, uh, just uh, full disclosure as of recording this part of the video, I don't know where he goes. I don't know if he's going to a zone scheme or a man scheme. Hopefully I mentioned that up front basically to, you know, bring down the third, the fourth wall a little bit with these videos. Uh, I record all the film study portions and then I just record the intro part at the night of the draft. So that way I can get a lot of content out and let you guys know sort of what the player is. And also you don't just have to randomly search for stuff earlier. You can kind of get the scheme fit. Plus I can get more out immediately, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Back to JC Horn. On this play, it's zone. But what's clear, what's great about JC Horn for me is if he is playing this cover three zone, basically he knows he has a little bit of help over the middle. You don't have to worry about that too much. Just don't get burned deep. So he kind of can, he can play off a little bit, which I know people love how he plays at the line, but I actually would like him playing off a lot more. I think that he would be a lot better at that because on a route like this, where this is kind of the problem with this, typically with this kind of coverage is just a quick route over the middle. Excuse me, not over the middle, but you know, off to the side. You know what I mean? The route you see on the screen and watch how right when this play starts. So you notice how Horn, you know, takes a couple steps back. He's still given this cushion, but now he can read the quarterback. He can read where this throw is going to be and he can break in. And watch how he runs forward very quickly. He makes that catch tough. It was caught, but he made it tough, and he got the immediate tackle. So, And that's basically best-case scenario, because I don't think he gets burned deep when he's giving that much cushion. So you put him in zone, he's going to thrive. So he really is, to me, he's scheme-dependent. But you know what? There's some value there. So I, I don't hate Horn at all. I think there's a lot of talent here. I just think that there are a little bit of issues, and I, I wouldn't love him in, as a man corner. That's just my opinion. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.